What is going on everybody, Estas here, welcome back to another video. So in this video we're going to be talking about an overall market update, looking at the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ, and we're going to be talking about a couple of trades that I made today on the 17th of December in 2018. But before we do talk about all of that, for all you new viewers out there, my name is Stas, and I make videos dealing with swing trading, day trading, long-term investing, and my personal philosophies and strategies when it comes down to investing and trading in the stock market. So for those of you guys that want to learn more about that, feel free to drop a like, leave a comment, subscribe, and follow me on Instagram as well as on Twitter, and join our Discord group chat as well as our Facebook group. All of those are linked down below in the description box. And if you guys want to be in contact with me and about 350 other investors and traders, feel free to join our Discord group chat, guys. We're talking on a day-to-day -day basis in that group about stocks, investing, trading strategies, just networking with each other and helping each other become the best possible traders and investors that we can all be. And again, all of those links are down below in the description box. If you guys do want to keep in touch with me personally and the entire community, and let's get started with today's video. What a day today in the overall markets, guys. The Dow was down 2% at the close. The S&P was, I believe, down about 2% as well. And the NASDAQ got crushed today day as well. What a what a bloody day guys. What a bloody day. Let's get into this and let's see what's going on in terms of the technicals for the Dow, the S&P and the Nasdaq. And for those of you guys that have been paying attention to the overall markets over the past couple of trading days, well, we had a couple of green days last week, a couple of green days. I believe it was 2 to 3 in a row and then we had a consolidation day following a 500 point drop in the Dow Jones, I believe a 50 point drop in the S&P and about a 150 point drop in the NASDAQ, which was this past Friday. So we had a 2% loss in the overall markets this past Friday. And what I envisioned happening today was either that A, we were going to sell off rapidly again, which is actually what ended up happening, or we were going to have a bounce back day. Large caps were going to move up a little bit higher. And, you know, we were going to pretty much just have a bounce back day from that 500.2% loss in the markets this past Friday. And what ended up happening, guys, is, you know, you saw it if today, today if you've been paying attention, but pretty much we opened up red today and then we had a pretty strong push back up and we ended up getting back to the break even point in terms of the Dow, the S&P and the Nasdaq. Large caps were looking pretty solid in the middle of the day, but then we saw a huge crash in pretty much the middle of the day here noon Eastern Standard Time from about 24k all the way down 500, almost 550 points down to the close of this market, right? You know, the Dow peaked up here, the S&P peaked up at the same time, right? I actually called this double top in the group chat for those of you guys that caught that. And, you know, the NASDAQ did the same thing if we're looking at this, right? At 12 o'clock p.m., right, Eastern Standard Time, it went from 6650 all the way down to 6420, guys. The NASDAQ lost 220 points today at its lowest. So very, very bloody day out there, guys. Let's get into it. What are we looking here in terms of the technicals? And, you know, what is this chart telling us? So for those of you guys that have been watching my videos for a while, I do these market updates and look at the major indexes for a reason. I do this because I like to see where the overall markets are pushing to determine what I'm going to be trading, whether it be large cap stocks, these market ETFs that I have here, these inverse ETFs, understanding the movement of the market really helps me pick and choose what I'm going to be trading, right? So the fact that we did our technical analysis yesterday and understood that there could be more red to come based off of these channels and based off of the support levels that we drew, you know, this gave me an indication on what I was going to trade today. So all you got to do, guys, is pretty much look at the indexes, pre-market hours, what are their futures, what are the futures looking like, and that could indicate what you're going to see that day in terms of the overall market. So for example, today we saw the Dow Jones was down, I believe, about 200 points or something like that, 150 points pre-market hours. We ended up selling down to about 300 points in the negative, and we broke back up to break even, like I told you guys a little bit before, right at this double top point here. And 
this is where we ended up selling off. And this is actually where I took a uh, position in one of the ETFs that I trade. And I ended up swinging it for a couple of hours down to about this range as the Dow, the S&P, and the NASDAQ continued to sell off. But before we do take a look at what trade I made, you know, let's take a deeper look into these technicals here. So we noticed the Dow making lower highs, right? We talked about that in pretty much every video. And now it's approaching the bottom part, the support level of this channel that we see here since it made another uh, really big drop today, 500 point drop. It really put it right at the bottom, you know, of this channel here. <coughs> indicating that this could be potentially a pushback spot for the Dow Jones because again guys it's in this pattern of making lower highs and making lower lows the lower low was here and then we had a couple days or a couple trading weeks where we held that support and then once we broke this a couple of days ago I made a video the day that it happened uh, called I believe Dow Jones breaks critical support you know this really you know continued the downwards trending channel for this index and the fact that we're here now <clears throat> i think this is a critical level for the dow jones so keep an eye here guys you know we are a little bit oversold in terms of the dow jones and that is kind of um you know, that's kind of understandable that it's oversold because we do have, we've been killed 1,000 points in the past two trading days. So the fact that we're oversold and we're down here by the support of this uh, channel, I wouldn't be surprised if we did have maybe a bounce back day or, or two. Uh, you know, I'm not saying it's going to happen tomorrow, guys. Again, we have to do our market research pre-market hours, but tomorrow, if you know the futures are up 100, 200 points, I wouldn't really be surprised surprise because again we sold off a thousand points right we're at the bottom of this channel and all i'm telling you guys and what i'm going to be doing myself is just to keep an eye on it right it's always important to just keep an eye on it draw these channel lines on your chart it'll help you guys a ton as it has helped me decide what to trade over these past couple of weeks since the, since the market has been extremely volatile but if we take a look here at the one year one day let's take a look at those supports that we were talking about in yesterday's video very briefly and then we'll hop into the S&P NASDAQ and talk about what I traded today. So these are the levels that were very critical for the Dow Jones stemming back a couple of months. So this past February, we had a very similar situation to what we're seeing now where the Dow Jones and the overall market sold off pretty heavily, right? We sold off all the way down to here which was about an 11% correction this past year, pretty much since the start of the uh, the new year back in, 2000, uh, in January 2018. And we drew out these support levels here. The one critical one was 24,000. We clearly broke below that today, right? Very, very bad technical indicator here. And the next one that we're actually, uh, you know, we pretty much broke below that one as well was $23,800. Very, very critical support there. We we ended up breaking below that one, and this one is in, at towards the end, I believe. Actually, no, this one was at the beginning of May in 2018. And now to draw another support, which we're actually like right at right now, it's about 200 points below that previous support, which is roughly at about $23,600, which we are clearly at that level now because the Dow closed today at about $23,592. So, Keep an eye on these levels, guys, because these are super important technical indicators, guys. These are super important technical points for the Dow. If we do break below here, guys, that's not good from a technical perspective, and it's pushing us deeper and deeper and deeper towards that bear market territory, which is anything above a 20% loss from the peak of an index. So where we are right now, guys, 23500 <clears throat> We're getting close, man. We're actually getting real close. We're down about 14% from the peak. And, uh, you know, we're only 6% off from being in a quote-unquote bear market. So <clears throat> very, very, uh, you know, ideal situation would be that we do hold above this, right? But again, the way the market has been, the way, the, you know, the, the, the uncertainty, the tariffs, the interest rates, you know, the market, uh, the growth weakening, right? The, uh, you know, what's that, what's that? Uh, the recession indicator um, is pointing towards uh, an inversion right now, which people think that is a recession indicator. The, what's it called guys? The yield curve, right? The yield curve is slowly starting to uh, curl in, which happened back in 08. And people say that this is a recession indicator, right? If you do, if you guys want to do more research on that, 
take a look into that. Super interesting stuff. But, you know, I think there's more downside in my personal opinion, again, due to the uncertainty. And the stock market does not like uncertainty, right? The stock market likes certainty. They don't like situations where there's a lot of doubt. And that's exactly the kind of situation that we're in right now. So keep an eye on all these guys. And again, very super important to keep an eye on these uh, technicals. <clears throat> Because they're really going to indicate what you're going to be trading. So the S&P guys, we did this yesterday as well. We drew out some very key support indicators, uh, support levels from a couple of months back. This one was back in February and March of 2018. And uh, we pretty much blew right through those today, right? We're at about 25.75 was that support level a couple months back. And we can clearly see the S&P closed today minus $54 at about $2,545. So we clearly broke right through that so taking a look back here at the three-year one-week chart <clears throat> you know the next support that we really could see at this point is like twenty four hundred dollars right am i saying the s&p is going to fall that much more right that would be another what that would be another 3-4% drop from where we are right now, close to 5%. I'm not necessarily saying that can happen, right? But in the, from a technical perspective, since we did break below this, you know, the next level that we could potentially get to, guys, is this 24, you know, 2450 level for the S&P 500. And this is something that could happen again due to the uncertainty, due to there being a panicky, uh, you know, sense in the markets right now. You guys have seen this, right? Once the market starts to fall a little bit, it's like it's slip, it's, it slips, it slips, and it starts to fall very quickly, very, very fast. That's the panic selling, right? That's panic selling. We've seen this happen so many times where the market falls, 100%, uh, not 100%, oh my god, that would be terrible, but if the market, you know, it falls 100 points, and then the next five minutes is down 200 points, 300 points, and I'm talking about the Dow Jones here, you know, this is a bunch of panic selling, so do I think it can fall down to 2,500, 2,450? I personally think that it could, judging off of these technicals, right, and again, the uncertainty and the doubt in the overall stock market, so you know, very bad day today, guys. Very, very bad day. I cannot say that enough. But again, if you understand how to trade in whatever market situation that we're in, you know, this shouldn't bother you whatsoever because playing both sides of the spectrum is something that I personally do and I encourage other people out there to do that as well. And by this, I mean trading stocks when the market is super volatile and going down in price so you can profit that way and then taking that money and then buying longer term positions when the stock market is down. This is something that I've been personally doing. I haven't been going out and buying a ton of long term stocks right now, but I've been funneling money a little bit into Apple, a little bit into Facebook, taking advantage of this huge drop that we've seen in the markets because Apple guys, I love Apple stock for the long term. They're going to be a huge dividend play in the next coming years. They already have a solid dividend at about 1.5%. And if they get that dividend up to 3%, which is very possible with all that cash that they do have on the balance sheet with the growth that they still have, you know, not too much growth, but they do have some steady steady, steady growth and, uh, you know, growing businesses within the business. I think Apple is, you know, a very good uh, uh, play right now, long term, in my personal opinion. And you have to do your own research. Don't buy any shares of stock. They're based on my opinion. Don't trade anything based off of my <coughs> uh, opinion, right? So NASDAQ, guys, I feel like I'm dragging on a little bit here. We're already 12 minutes deep, but, you know, this is something, again, I'm very passionate about, and I could talk about this stuff all day, but let's just get a little... Let's get a little quicker right now. So the NASDAQ, you know, we, again, we saw it was down 220 and we're actually right at that support from a couple of months back, you know, same area as the S&P, I believe, back in uh, April and uh, what's it called? May of 2018. So keep an eye on this level. It's looking like we're breaking below it a little bit after market hours because these are the futures, guys. Remember that. And the uh, next support for the NASDAQ is going to be at about, what is that, 6,400, which is about 80, 90 points below where we currently are in this index. So again, very, very, very bloody day. Terrible day out there in the markets. All the stocks, pretty much all the big stocks that are in my portfolio, we got crushed today. But again, this is just a buying opportunity, in my personal opinion, if you do believe in the companies that you are owning in the long term. So 
Let's take a look now at what I traded today, and I'm sure you guys can guess if you're in the group chat, you already know. That is TVI. X. And this is an ETF that I've been trading a ton over the past couple of weeks since the market has been getting crushed. And let's take a look here, guys, uh, you know, what I personally did today in terms of TVIX. So I traded this one twice today. I was not able to catch <clears throat> this amazing run that we had all the way up to here. If I did, guys, I would have made a crap ton of money today. I would have made like 10%, 9% on my position. But again, I'm more conservative. Once I usually hit my daily goal of 3, 4, 5%, I stop trading for the day. I, I turn off my thinkorswim and I pretty much just, you know, talk to people in the group chat, help out, do whatever, and do other side projects that I'm working on. But, you know, TVIX, let's just jump into it right now. And for those of you guys that don't know, TVIX is an ETF that goes up in price when the overall markets go down in price and attracts the S&P more closely than any other index. So let's uh, take a look here where I personally got in. I actually got in originally on this pullback that we saw early on today at about $55.10. And I actually only got 1% on this trade. We popped up here, right? And since we made a higher high, I wanted to take that quick little profit that I just got. And as I saw, you know, once we popped up here, I saw the consolidation on the EMA and I saw it struggling to break past that 56.10 range that it just set, right? We, we noticed that whenever a stock or an ETF pushes up to a higher high and then on the pullback, it has difficulty breaking back above it, right? That is a sign of resistance. And we saw that earlier on the S&P where I ended up trading TVIX again, but we'll get into that in a couple of minutes. But we see here, guys, TVIX, I noticed this triple top actually here, and we started to break back down, and I ended up just taking a 1% profit on TVIX. So from 55.10, guys, I rode this one up for 1%. I pretty much just took my profits as we broke below this, uh, you know, this res or this support level here on TVIX at about, what was that, like $55 and roughly 70 cents is where I took my profits. So took my profits there. We sold off pretty heavily. And, you know, this is when the markets were actually rebounding towards, you know, the, the beginning of the day, towards the middle of the day. And we saw this double bottom here on TVIX, very good sign of a uh, support level from, you know, a support level. Uh, and, you know, we, we saw it started to push back up above the 50 SMA, and then eventually it broke out of this 180 SMA. And this is actually where I started to add more money into TVIX as another trade. So ended up putting money in at about $54.50. Pulled back down, you know, consolidated here at 55.40, added some more money, and then I ended up just taking my profits, I believe around like $56.30, $56.40, as we got closer to that, you know, uh, that, that resistance from earlier on in the day. And this is what I like to call a gap fill, right? This is what I traded, uh, and this is pretty much my strategy, you know, coming into this trade. We noticed that, uh, you know, to explain what that means a little bit more from my perspective, perspective. Again, we saw the double bottom here, support level, meaning that it could reverse from this point. And we had that margin of profit from earlier on in the day of about 5%. So what I wanted to see guys is for TVIX to fill this little gap, right? That's why I personally call it a gap fill. I don't know if that's what other people call it, but again, that's what I personally call it. So, you know, it is what it is, right? So, you know, I got in here a little, right? And I got in again here with another position. And, you know, I pretty much rode up this gap fill. So I got out at about $56.00. And uh, 30 cents, roughly 40 cents as we got to that resistance. And again, you know, if I held guys, oh my God, I would have made like triple of what I made. But again, I'm conservative. Profit is profit and I'm happy with it. So, you know, just to see the percentage on this trade, I got in here roughly again, right? And I got in here. So I think my average position was at about like 54.80 or something like that, you know, all the way up to 56.30. I ended up making about $56.35. That's where I ended up selling, right? I ended up making about 3%, 2.8% on TVIX this go around. So based off these two trades, guys, I made about 4% on my position and again I left a bunch on the table but I'm not mad about that because I'm all about sticking to my strategy 
being profitable, right? Sticking to the goal and uh, moving on to the next trading day. And I actually took a little loss on UWT. I believe this was in between these two trades on, uh, you know, these two TBIX trades, like in during this time period right here, I took a little loss on uh, UWT and I had a super tight stop loss on this one, super, super tight. And we could see where I ended up taking the loss here. So during this time period, this was in between those two trades of TBIX. I saw this reversal pattern start to form on UWT. And this is one that we called out in yesterday's video. It obviously ended up not performing according to plan, which is why I ended up cutting my loss losses fairly quickly on this one. So I ended up getting in, I, I believe right around like $13. I was pretty, I was in the green on this one up 2%. Got a little greedy here, guys, not going to lie to you. And from $13, I ended up just cutting my losses down about one, one point. I think my stop loss was about 1% on this one. So from $13, it was 1.2 actually, because I did set it at about $12.90. So I ended up stopping out there for a 1.2% loss. So 4% gain minus 1.2, 2.8% growth today with the money that I traded in my portfolio, in my account. And again, a little bit shy of my daily goal, right? But again, I'm super happy with it because I'm all about staying green. I'm all about being profitable. And that is what happened today. And every profitable day that I get in the stock market, trading stocks, ETFs, whatever we're trading, I'm super excited about it. So now to take a look at some other ETFs and stocks that we talked about in yesterday's video and some that I'm watching for tomorrow before I do end off this video. So the crude oil ETFs are UWT and DWT. I talked about how I took a loss in UWT today and pretty much guys, the technicals on crude oil are telling us that there's a break of pattern. So what I mean by that is we broke below this strong support level today at about $50.50. We obviously broke below that and that's pretty much why I ended up taking a loss on uh, UWT because it ended up not playing according to my plan, right? But now we do see it's holding above this next support level actually right now at about $49.60. So this is a level that we definitely want to keep an eye on for crude oil. And if we do end up holding above here, guys, and the fact that it is a little bit oversold, it's really oversold based off this RSI, you know, this could be a good opportunity for a bounce back play in UWT. But again, guys, it's all about waiting for that confirmation. We're seeing some consolidation now, but a confirmation would be if we break back above at least $50 in my personal opinion to start moving back up to that next resistance, which is now about $50.75 because once you break below the support, it becomes a new resistance. And we see that here. You know, we do have some margin in terms of crude oil and UWT tomorrow, but we would love to see crude oil fill this gap tomorrow for UWT to be a relevant play in my personal opinion. Is there more room to sell off in crude oil? There definitely is because the overall pattern guys is still telling us that crude oil is making lower lows, you know, it's pushing down in price. Just because it's consolidating right here doesn't mean that it's actually going to reverse and push to the upside. There's obviously still a chance that it breaks this support and starts to go down in price. So it's very important to keep an eye on all news dealing with crude oil, everything that affects crude oil, and obviously keep an eye on these support levels, these technical uh, marks and technical points in crude oil. But let's say, you know, again, we consolidate and start to push back up. You know, it could be a good opportunity to hop into UWT. But if we do break the support on the downside, right, DWT might continue to be a fantastic play. Like it obviously has been over the past couple of weeks. You know, this was once a $4 ETF. You know, it pretty much tripled 3x in price over the past couple of weeks since crude oil saw one of the biggest losses that we've seen in a long time. So another one that did very well today was a natural gas ETF called DGAS, right? We talk about this one all the time. This is one that's heavily traded in the group. I personally haven't been trading this one too much because the, uh, the volatility and the lack of, uh, you know, predicting what the movements are going to be for me has really led to me, you know, staying away from these. But again, congrats to everybody that has been able to capitalize on these moves because there's been some 
ridiculous moves. And let's just quickly take a look at this one right now. So for those of you all that watched my video yesterday, I was talking about how natural gas obviously broke the pattern uh, that we were on, the uptrending pattern. We're now downtrending. We're in that falling knife formation, and there could be more downside to come, right? And we either talked about, we talked about how we're either going to pop back up and have some bounce back days for natural gas at this consolidation point because at yesterday's video we were consolidating right here I believe from that gap down or are we going to you know continue to sell off and obviously we continue to sell off right you know natural gas is still in that falling knife formation which obviously helped degas a crap ton today since it was up 20 percent so you know this is a crazy ETF combo guys natural gas literally came up really quick and now it's falling even quicker so it's absolutely ridiculous and this is why I've just been staying away because I don't want to play with fire right now guys these are really hard to predict and you know we could catch a big move right obviously if you hopped in today you would have made 15% on your money 10% on your money but I'd rather just play it safe stick to what I understand most which is TVIX that's been my money maker over the past couple of weeks because I've been able to read the charts on the overall markets very well to be able to play TVIX and I've almost built an intuition to the overall markets where I can like sense when it's going to fall I don't even understand how to explain that to you but I don't know why Maybe it's because I've been in the markets for quite some time now. I understand the charts. I look at them every day. But, you know, I've kind of built an intuition where, you know, I saw that double top in S&P, right? I talked about it in the chat. And literally from there, guys, you know, the S&P fell 2% and TVIX shot up 10% from that point. So it's like, it's crazy how, you know, it takes some time, but you do slowly start building intuition uh, in the markets, right? I'm not saying everybody's going to start to build that, but if you do put your time in right if you do educate yourself you're going to build some intuition where you can you know go off your gut feeling are you going to be right every single time of course not right but you know if you do build that intuition enough if you do study enough right you're going to be winning a lot of trades especially if you just put in the time guys it takes time doesn't take a month it takes years so i hope you guys enjoyed this video what i'm going to be watching tomorrow pretty much what i've been watching over the past couple of weeks and what has been working for me right these basket of market etfs you know i'm going to be watching jnug jdst drip you know j uh gush rather you know drip has been absolutely killing it right this is one that everybody should be keeping an eye on because look at all these moves that it's been making right you know natural gas i'm going to be watching that one although it's been extremely volatile I might see, you know, if I can catch a move on it tomorrow, you know, obviously UWT, DWT, and you know, all these tech stocks and large cap stocks that could potentially have a bounce back day tomorrow, the next day or the next day, if we do end up seeing some more, you know, uh, you know, upwards push in the overall stock market. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, feel free to drop a like, leave a comment, subscribe, follow me on Instagram and Twitter. All the links are down below in the description box. Join the discord, join the Facebook do your own research, guys. Please, please, please do your own research. Don't trade, invest based off of my opinion because that's not how you're going to become a successful trader and investor over time. So I'll catch you in the next video. Have a great rest of your day. Peace out.